What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and today we're going to do a little bit of hacking on this motorcycle. Let's get going. I just lopped this whole section off my bike because I'm going to put on a tail tidy. It'll be something like, like that. I'll just lop all that off and then just put that right there. This came with my bike, this tail tidy, but I'm not going to put it on it. I uh, I use this for touring and I kind of want the splash guard kind of like on there so I just lopped this whole back section off my bike. I'm not sure if that's the 100% correct way to do it but that's how I did it and I think it's going to be alright. So I cleaned it up a little bit with a little piece of sandpaper. I did a real good job cutting it. I just used the sawzall to, to cut out the shape. And I'm going to install this tail tidy onto this rear section right here. So this section is upside down. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to take this and attach it something like that so that this bracket isn't rubbing on the paint, solid paint. I've got these little pieces right here, which is from a, a fairing kit that I had. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to push these down through that hole. That'll kind of give like a little bit of a a spacer but that hole is not quite big enough to fit that through so that gives me a great opportunity to try out some drill bits that a company sent me. This is how it came in the package this is um, peeled back I can't get it to stick back down but the company's name is Drill America and this is a pretty cool little uh, design I wasn't quite sure about this little belt clip thing but you know if you had like a bucket a lot of guys work out of a five gallon bucket you could click that right to a side, uh, side of your uh, five gallon bucket and this is a 29 piece jobber kit. Uh, it goes from 16th inch to half inch by 64th. And the real neat thing is, is that this is waterproof. It's got an O-ring in it. So you don't have to worry about it rusting. So that's kind of kind of cool. Look at that little rubber O-ring right there. And that's how the drill bit is indexed. It's got all the sizes inscribed on the top. Pretty nice little kit. I like it. I'll put a link down in the description if you guys want to check it out. I have a set of bits from uh, Lawson and they look very much like this with the gold. All right, here we go. Let's see if that'll fit down in there. Yep, that's what we needed right there. And then just take that bushing and yeah, push it right down in there. That way the metal from the bracket won't rub on it. Yeah. Some big washers on the back just to give it a nice surface to bear on. And here it is all installed. So I, I think it was a huge improvement over what was there before. And it's used, you can see the little spacer right up in there. And I use some stainless steel hardware. I still got to get a, another thing for my license plate. But yeah, looks good. It's got hyper flash on it. Because if you don't know what that is, whenever you put LEDs in it, because LEDs draw such little power that, that the sensors don't recognize it as being an a actual bulb. It thinks that the bulb is burned out. So it will start flashing fast to alert you that you have a blown bulb when in fact you really don't. And you can see the improvement this is what used to be on there that big thing and now we got just that and to keep things nice and factory looking i actually took because i'm not going to reuse this i actually took the factory connectors off the ends of these and then just wired them into the taillight wires for these existing ones so then they could just plug in right there into the existing harnesses. And if you ever got to work on it, 
You don't have to do anything fancy. You can just unplug it like you normally would. Everything will work. You can see what I mean about that fast flash though. That's not supposed to do that. See the indicator up on the dash. To get rid of that fast flash, it's pretty easy. This is the flasher assembly. Just remove the stock one. This was like 10 bucks. It's made for LEDs. And then just literally plug it in. It just snaps into place. And now we'll turn on the blinker. See that now? Now it's blinking at a normal rate. This is the stock air filter right here. Original from 2003, I believe. And just one last little detail. You can see how this is kind of split. And I tried putting some contact adhesive on it last year, but it didn't really hold, so we'll replace that. Just dry rotted, basically. Just put a little bit of soap inside this. Yeah, just like that. So we're all back together now. The only thing we got left to do is just fix up this jacked up exhaust. I talked to you about that in a recent episode. You see how there's that big gap right there? I really want that to hug the bike better. So what happened was is that the original exhaust, somebody cut that off. They just lopped it off here. The original exhaust is all one piece. It went down and then it connects down to here. So somebody just lopped it off and now that kicks it out like that. I don't like that. So... Uh, I think what I'm going to do is fabricate and we'll TIG weld up a piece of stainless that kicks it back over. But i got to find a piece of pipe to do that because this is an oddball, uh, this is an oddball size. It measures out like two and three eighths of an inch. So, so this right here, it's a, a battery charger. A company called Bolt Power uh, sent this to me. It's a 12 volt, 3.8 amp. It's all electronic and it's very similar to like a battery tender or something like that. But it's a little bit bigger because it puts out a little more power. You can see how it's all electronic. And the great thing about this is that this will charge uh, the lithium batteries. So normally the lead acid battery chargers can't charge lithium, but this one can. So if you have one that will do a lithium battery, it'll do just your standard uh, lead battery, lead acid battery as well. It's got a bunch of features on the back. It shows you what it's doing. And then you can permanently wire this into your bike like I did here or your car, whatever. And it also has some jump starter cables uh, as well. You can click, click them right to the battery. See, it says it's for a truck, car, motorcycle, golf car, lawnmower, pretty much anything with a battery. And I really like that it's, if it's got a lithium battery in it, you can use this to charge it. But this right here is one of the things I'm real excited on. So my wife and I, this summer, uh, we're going to take a trip to uh, Montreal, Canada. And it's always, when you're on the road, a concern that if you have a dead battery or even just charging up your stuff. Um, I have power ports on my uh, other bike, but this is super handy. Now, I will confess, I took this with me over this past weekend. This is a 1500 amp uh, car booster. You can start your car with this. It's rated for 1500 amps, and I'll show you the accessories. But what my wife and I did was, is we went down uh, to the casino and of course we lost our shirt but um, what I like to do is when I get into bed at night I like to listen to my to my phone with headphones in uh, and I don't necessarily have a cord in a hotel room that'll reach so what I did is I plugged my phone into this and this powered up my phone uh, all night long so you can see right here it's got a digital display this is a hundred percent but the great thing is is this USB I think it's called USB-C it can be in or out and that's how you charge it and it also has a DC output it's got fast charging for USB and it also has a flashlight so you just hold the hold the power button down for the flashlight there and then you got a flashlight and it also does some little strobe thing too but not that you'd need that but so here is another little feature that I'm kind of excited about so 
my bike has GPS, right? Um, I have a Garmin on it. And when you're doing a trip on the road, it's nice to be able to, you know, program some routes. If you see some things that you like, you can program it on your Garmin. Well, provided you got a, a good battery and it stays up. Well, the batteries aren't really that great. At least mine isn't that great. So what you can do is, is you can take this. It comes with this accessory port. And most Garmin's have that cigarette lighter plug. Then you can power your Garmin off it too, which is kind of cool. So we're going to use this quite a bit on our trip to like power up and charge our devices. Um, that way we know we always have a powered up cell phone in case we run into something. We can power up our uh, headset because we have helmet uh, communicators. And we can bring this inside to keep the GPS charged up. And I'll show you. Then it has just this standard USB charging plug. So just any old standard plug. It comes with all of this. So you just plug this into your wall plug and you plug that into the side of this and that's what charges this uh, battery pack up. And then it's got this to boost your vehicle. So if your battery runs dead or whatever, you can plug this right into here like that. And then it has a digital readout. It'll tell you if you have reverse polarity. So we'll turn that on. So if you hook that up, it'll I believe it tells you if you have reverse polarity and whatnot. So I'm real excited about this uh, battery pack. I think this is going to be real handy on a trip. And I don't know if you guys have ever been on a you know long motorcycle ride or something like that and had a bunch of accessories plugged in and you had them plugged into a power port that was running constantly and you go to get on your bike and you're getting ready to leave and the battery is just barely cranking over. So I've had that issue so I don't have to worry about it with this. I'm going to have this there. I'll have it with me all the time. It's going to be a nice peace of mind and it takes up very little room and it's super light. So I'm looking forward to taking this with me this summer. All right, I'm going to show you a little sneak peek of something that's coming up, but it won't be until next week's video. So check this out. I've got a carbon fiber stinger. That's, that's real carbon fiber. Enough of that though. We'll look at that next week and we'll try it out. We'll have a uh, stick welding video next week. And after that welding video, we've got to get back onto this. This is the 33 year old TRX 70 build and we're gonna do some fabricating of some parts and make a fabricated grab handle for right there. with bikes if you take a little bit of silicone compound not like silicone like you'd cock up your windows and doors with but silicone compound made for electrical connections and rubber put those on your grommets when you go to pop back in like trim pieces and everything will just come apart and go back together so much better and that way you don't have to worry about breaking off uh, tabs on your fairings and stuff no charge for that tip either If you guys haven't seen this filter, and I don't think you have, uh, I found out that an animal had made a nest in this, so I ordered a new filter, but I'll put up some pictures of it right now and you can check it out. If you guys follow me on Facebook or Instagram, I put those pictures up and I cannot get over how much uh, stuff was inside this air cleaner and it still ran. I, like I said, I bought this uh, bike from a dealer, so obviously something got into this air box. Be interesting to see how it goes this summer. So that, it was pretty dirty guys. I think it was in need. My wife and I uh, went from Maine to New Hampshire and it was raining out and the bike stalled and obviously I didn't know what happened at the time so I brought it to a dealer and they said well maybe some water uh, got up in the ignition or something because we were traveling on like a dirt road so I think it had something to do with it starving for air
you can see I've got quite a bit of wire. Now what I did is I wired up a relay into here so that when I turn on the ignition, it powers up this right here. It powers up this lighter socket, which powers up my GPS. And it also powers up this, which is a uh, dual USB cord. And it also reads out the battery voltage. And then this one right here is constant power. So this one you could hook up that, uh, you know, that bolt power charger that I showed you. But uh, I like the idea that I can charge up all my accessories and I can use the bike to charge up the battery pack also. So I'll turn that on and you can see how that like 12.3 volts so but let's see if it starts with that new air filter yep there yeah, see when you turn off the key that shuts off so you don't have to worry about killing your battery unless you were plugged in to the constant power one then you could kill your battery but yeah that's all there is to it guys i want to thank you for watching thank you guys for tuning in new videos every friday i primarily try to do welding videos but they can't all be if you guys wonder what i'm working on before it makes it up to youtube you guys can catch me on instagram and on facebook until next week guys i will see you then take care stay safe See ya.